Hey folks, welcome back. Uh, trigonometry, angles and ratios, lesson one, rotation angles and reference angles. Uh, these two things are very closely related. So um, yeah, so here we go. This is the first of two units that we'll be doing on trigonometry. Uh, we'll do, uh, there'll be a little bit of quick review on what you should know for trig coming up in this unit somewhere. I'm pretty sure you need it. And then we, uh, we take that idea of non-right angle triangles and we introduce the sine and cosine law. Uh, and that's the other unit in tr of trig, okay? So here we are, angles in standard position. Angles can be measured in degrees uh, where 360 degrees is one complete rotation. There are two other measurements that are used for angle measurements. Uh, those are radians and gradients. And you'll learn about those uh, next year if you take pre-calculus 12, okay? So uh, we know that in a full circle, there's 360 degrees. So that's one complete rotation. A rotation angle is formed uh, by rotating an initial arm, an initial arm or initial side through an angle theta about a fixed point, which is the vertex. So if we have uh, this drawing of an, uh, of an angle, this is the initial arm, this is the terminal arm through some degree rotation of theta. Remember theta, that fancy circle with an O th or line through it or O with a line through it. Uh, that's our symbol that we use to represent angle measurements. Okay? So this is called the terminal arm. I mean, initial arm. This is the terminal arm. And where those two meet, that's the vertex. Any corner is kind of indicated, it's, it's called a vertex. So in a triangle, there are three vertices, one, two, three, three different uh, corners, right? The angle formed between the initial arm and the terminal arm is the rotation angle. So there's gonna be two terms that's already been introduced, the rotation angle, where you start from to where you end up. And that rotation can go uh, anywhere from zero to 360 degrees, which is one full rotation, or that can continue and just keep going around and around and around. Okay? Or it could actually go backwards as well. So these rotation uh, angles that go counterclockwise. These are positive rotation angles. Angles that go clockwise, these are negative rotation angles, okay? So those are negative. So two different types of, of angles or rotation angles that we can get there. Positive angle results from a counterclockwise rotation and negative angle results from a clockwise rotation. This angle here above, this is shown to be in standard uh, standard position. So standard position is you start on the, well, would technically be the right-hand side of the y-axis, right on the x-axis line, and you count, obviously, counterclockwise. That's a standard position angle. On a coordinate grid, the standard position means the initial arm. The initial arm is along the positive x-axis, and, and the rotation is about the origin. This would be zero, zero, right? So here in this diagram below, they show a, uh, an angle of 220 degrees in standard position. So this is a rotation angle. <clears throat> a rotation angle of 220 degrees in standard position. And we always indicate the angles with some kind of arrow starting on our initial arm, in this case, right here, right? So this is 90 degrees. This is another 90 degrees. And then this little part, uh, whatever that adds up to, what did it say, 220? So this is going to be 30 degrees. 90 and 90. Oh, no, uh, 180, 210, that's what should be 40 degrees. 90 and 90 is 180. We want 220. This is going to be 40 degrees, not 30 degrees. All right. Now, I'll introduce it now just because I can. It's right here. This is a rotation angle. It starts in, st in standard position. It starts on the x-axis and it goes through some kind of rotation ending up on the terminal arm. This being the vertex, there's our terminal arm. This is still our initial arm. So this is in standard position. This is a 220 degree rotation angle. This angle formed here between the terminal arm and the closest x-axis 
This is called the reference angle, okay? Which is gonna come up real quick. This is the reference angle. Oh, there should be a C there, reference angle. And it's the reference angle that we're gonna do much or most of our work with, okay, eventually. So just good to, good to know that a little bit ahead of time and it'll come up again. So example one, sketch the rotation angle in standard position and state the quadrant in which the angle terminates. So a rotation angle of 120 degrees, always starting here in standard position, starting here, counting counterclockwise, that's 90, all the way to here is 180. So 120 has got to end somewhere in here. And we're just looking for a sketch. We're not looking for accuracy. You don't need to measure with a protractor. I could probably make my line straight, kind of like that. And then of course it needs a label, <coughs> 120 degrees. Okay, so there's A. Now again, just as a, another side note, this leftover bit here to the nearest X axis, that is our reference angle. And in this case, that would be 60 degrees. Okay. Next question B, we're looking for a rotation angle. Oh, sorry, we didn't do the second part of the question. And this angle terminates terminates in quadrant. If you remember the quadrants, this is quadrant one, quadrant two, three, four. Terminates in quadrant two. 309 degrees. Uh, here's our initial arm, counting counterclockwise. There's 90, there's 180, there's 270. And somewhere into this quadrant, which is quadrant four, we would have 309 degrees, and you would label that 309. <clears throat> and again, just as an extra right now, this angle from the terminal arm to the nearest X axis, that is our reference angle. And in this case, this would have a value of uh, 51 degrees, 360 minus 309. Question C, a rotation angle of 17 degrees. So 17 is just gonna start here, go up a little bit, terminate maybe in there somewhere. That would be 17 degrees and you would mark that. <clears throat> now in this quadrant, this actually is also the same as our reference angle. So in quadrant one, our reference angle is equal to the rotation angle, okay? just so that you are aware of that. Over the page, example two, Draw the rotation angle in standard position, a rotation of 150 degrees. So it tells us right here, rotation of 150 degrees. There's our initial arm. It's gonna go like this. And we're gonna label that 150 degrees. Okay. And then it asks us to draw and label a reference angle of two, negative 210. So here's our initial arm. We'll go negative, we're gonna count clockwise. 90, 180, plus this amount, which is gonna be 30, is 210, 210 degrees. Okay. <clears throat> so we know that this is 30, is 180 plus 30 is 210. So let me change colors. This is 30. If we go back to question A, well, I know that this is 30 because to continually keep going from 150 to 180 is gonna be 30 degrees. And then our question C says a rotation angle of, <coughs> oh, I think we were doing red, weren't we? Rotation angle of 510. So 510 is gonna have our initial arm here. We're gonna go all the way around the circle once, that's 360. We're gonna add 90 again, 360 and 90 is 450. <coughs> 450 and 60 more is gonna give us 510. This still being, 30 degrees. So you can see all of these angles, 150 degree rotation, negative 210 degree rotation, uh, 510 degree rotation, they all terminate at the same place. They all terminate right here. Ends right here. Ends right here. Ends right here. They all have this same 30 degree reference angle same 30 degree reference angle. We call those types of angles co-terminal. Co-terminal angles 
terminate at the same place. So their terminal arm is in the same place. Okay. Since 150 degrees is the measure of the smallest, since 150 degrees is the measure of the smallest positive rotation angle, coterminal with the angles, this is called the principal angle. Okay, the principal angle, the smallest rotation angle possible. Okay. We'll always have a measure between zero and 360 somewhere, won't be any more. And there are infinitely many angles that are coterminal with any given angle. You can just keep going around in a circle and get back to that same place, right? Whether it's positive or negative. Okay, question three or example three. Point P lies on the terminal arm of angle theta. Draw the angle in standard position. So first of all, we need our coordinate grid. There's our coordinate grid. And if we had to plot the point two negative four, two negative four, that might be down here somewhere. Two negative four. <coughs> and then we would simply just draw an angle from the origin to that point. But we would want to label that. So we would draw our line from our initial arm through to our terminal arm, throw an arrow on the end, and we could call this, well, they called it theta. So theta degrees. And eventually we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem and our trig ratios to determine what that is. So just as a quick reminder, a squared plus B squared equals C squared is our Pythagorean theorem. And Sakatoa, those are our three trig ratios, right? So we're going to use both of those uh, coming up fairly quick to determine uh, those at that actual angle measurement, this angle measurement and or the reference angle measurement. Question B, <clears throat> negative five, negative one. So again, I'm going to draw my coordinate grid. Negative five, negative five, negative one might be over here somewhere. Ending in quadrant three, draw my line to indicate my angle from the origin, draw my arc from my initial arm through to my angle, toss an arrow on the end of it, call it angle theta. And of course, label your point, negative five, negative one. Because those values on that point are gonna become fairly important fairly quickly. Okay, over the page. Now I think we get to start talking about reference angles. Nice, which will be review because we've already done that. Reference angle. Reference angle is the acute angle formed between the terminal arm of the rotation angle and the X axis, wherever the closest X axis is. So on here, it says the diagram that shows the terminal arm of a rotation angle of 141 degrees with a reference angle of 39. Mark and label them both. Rotation angles begin on the positive X axis. So to indicate my rotation angle, I would draw this. That's my rotation angle of 141 degrees. And my reference angle is the part from the terminal arm to the closest X axis, this part right here. Well, if all of this is 180 degrees, but just this part is 141, I can go 180 minus 41, 180 minus 141 to give me, what is that, 50, 40, 40, 38, 38, 39 degrees, 39 degrees. Oh, it actually told us, 39 degrees. So I would just scribble 39 degrees in right there. There's my reference angle. <coughs> uh, Key to remember is that reference angles go to the nearest X axis. Example four, in each case, sketch the rotation angle and state to the reference angle. 243 degrees, so we're gonna start on our positive X axis. We're gonna go counterclockwise. There's 90, there's 180. All the way through to there is 270, so that's too far. Oh, look, I snapped a circle. Bummer, didn't want that though. Okay, here, 90, 180 plus sum is gonna give me 243 degrees. So I write 243 degrees. And then it wants a reference angle. So my reference angle 
is this one here from the terminal arm to the nearest x axis. So that means I need to eliminate this part of my angle, which is 180 degrees. So I go 243 minus 180 equals, <coughs> uh, what is that, 63? 63 degrees, 63 degrees. Okay, question B, 337 degrees. So I'm gonna start on my positive X axis. I'm gonna go around here to there. There's 90, 180, 270, three, what are we talking about? 337 is somewhere in here. So I would mark that 337 degrees. And then I would determine what my reference angle is, which is this one right here. It's to the closest X axis, X axis. I mean, 360 minus 337 is gonna be equal to 23 degrees. 23 degrees, that's a three. Three there, okay. <clears throat> Question C, 70 degrees. So positive rotation, 70 degrees somewhere in there, draw my angle, we call that 70 degrees. And in this case, my reference angle is the same as my rotation angle to the nearest x-axis is still this one right here. So it's still 70 degrees. Quite example three, or no, sorry, example five. On the grid, draw a reference angle of 58 degrees in each of the four quadrants, one to four. So somewhere in here, I'm gonna draw an angle of 58 degrees. It doesn't have to be measured out with a protractor or anything. You just draw your angle call it 58 degrees. So that's in quadrant one. In quadrant two, I'm gonna have a similar angle. It's like a mirror image over the y-axis. And this reference angle is still 58 degrees. In quadrant three, I'm gonna have a reflection in the x-axis, which means it gets flipped upside down. And this angle to the nearest x-axis is 58 degrees. And in my last quadrant, quadrant four, again, a mirror image or reflection down. This is 58 degrees to the nearest x axis. Okay. State the measure of the rotation angle in each quadrant. So, here, let's do this. I'll show you quadrant one, the rotation angle equals reference angle. So, this is 58 degrees. In quadrant two, I'm always gonna go 180 degrees minus the rotation angle, okay? Minus the rotation angle. Sorry, minus the reference angle, minus the reference angle. So this is 180 minus 58, because we're looking for the rotation angle, is equal to 122 degrees. That's the rotation angle. In quadrant three, uh, quadrant three is gonna be 180 degrees plus that reference angle. Oh, that should say reference angle. Which is 180 plus 58, which is equal to 238 degrees. And in quadrant four, it's going to be 200, it's going to be 360 minus your reference angle, whoops. 360 minus 58, which is 302 degrees. Question C, let P58, which is a point 58, be a point on the terminal arm of a rotation angle in quadrant one. State the coordinates of points Q, R, and S, which are on the terminal arms of the rotation angles in quadrants two, three, and four, respectively. So let's draw our grid. And we plot our point five, eight. Five, eight, let's call it there. Label our point, five, eight. And you would draw, well, you could draw your angle, boom right there. Then it states the point, so this is point P. 
Then it states uh, the coordinates of Q, R, and S, which are on the terminal arms, uh, terminal arms of the rotation angles in quadrants two, three, and four, respectively. So using those coordinate points, five, eight, if I now draw my terminal arm of my angle over here, that means this point is going to be negative five, eight. That's in quadrant two. In quadrant three, it's going to be down here. This point is going to be negative five, negative eight. And then in quadrant four, five, negative eight. So it's just the signs of the X or Y coordinate point that are changing as you're moving around that coordinate grid. Okay. Turning the page. <clears throat> Example six, determine the measure of the rotation angle X where theta is less than equal to X, which is less than 360 degrees. So it's just saying that X can be anywhere between zero and 360 degrees, given the reference angle of the quadrant. So here is question one or the first part. We have a reference angle of 25 degrees. We're in quadrant two. What's our sketch and what's the rotation angle? So this is gonna get a little tricky because this is so tiny. Reference angle of 25 degrees, but we're in quadrant two. So we're over here somewhere. Oops, I guess I need a pen, there we go. We're over here somewhere. We know that my reference angle is 25 degrees. We want to know this rotation angle, okay? Well, remember, all of this has to add to 180. So I can simply go 180 minus 25, 180 minus 25, 160, no, 155 degrees. So my rotation angle, 155 degrees. Question two, or the second part, 60 degrees in quadrant four. So in quadrant four, we're down here. 60 degrees, there's my reference angle, 60 degrees. What's my rotation angle? Well, that one might be pretty easy to figure out. 360, take away 60 is equal to 300 degrees. <clears throat> Third one, eight degrees in quadrant three. So in quadrant one, two, three, we're here. Eight degrees is kind of tiny, so it might be out here somewhere. Eight degrees. My rotation angle is gonna go from my initial arm through to my angle, which is going to be 90 and 180 plus eight, 180 plus eight, 188 degrees. And then we have 39 degrees in quadrant one. Boom, 39 degrees, quadrant one, 39. My rotation angle and my reference angle in quadrant one are the same and 90 degrees between quadrants three and four. So the only angle between quadrants three and four at 90 degrees is this one right here, okay? This one right here. What's the reference angle or what's the rotation angle? Start here, all the way around. That would be 90, 90, 90 is 270 degrees. Okay, question seven, last example. <clears throat> Determine three angles between zero and 360 degrees, which have the same reference angle as a rotation angle of 256. So that means that we have a reference angle of 256 degrees, which is gonna look like this, something like this, okay. which means this reference angle is what? 180, no, sorry, 256 minus 180 is equal to 276. So this reference angle is 76 degrees. Where are the other angles in the other quadrants with a reference angle of 76 degrees? There's one here, this would be 76. There's one here, this would be 76. And there's one here where this would be 76. But it wants the rotation angle, okay? Rotation angle, where does it say, oh no, yep. Determine the angles zero to 360, that same rotation as that. So in quadrant one, it's 
it's just 76 degrees. Rotation and reference are the same. In quadrant two, it's going to be this to there. So it's going to be 180 minus 76, which is equal to 104. In quadrant three, we already have. So in quadrant four, it's going to be uh, all the way around. So 360 minus 76 is equal to 284 degrees. Okay. That brings us to the end of lesson one in trigonometry, angles and ratios, uh, checking scholantis or checking the sideboard to see which questions are going to be uh, going to be needed to be done. Uh, and we will see you next time.